Agriculture forms the backbone of most African economies. It accounts for 32% of the continent's gross domestic product and is thus key to the growth and development prospects of most African countries. In July 2003, at the African Union Summit in Maputo, Mozambique, African leaders made a bold commitment to reverse the underinvestment that had held the agriculture sector back for so long. Through the Maputo Declaration, African heads of state made the following promises to their people. One, to allocate at least 10% of national budgets to agriculture, and secondly, to achieve at least 6% annual agricultural growth. The 10% spending target represented a commitment to double what was then the average spending level of approximately 5% of national budgets. A decade later, after the Maputo targets in 2003, the results were decidedly mixed. Fewer than 20% of countries had fulfilled either of their Maputo commitments. Only 10 countries had met the 6% agricultural growth target by 2014. Overall agricultural GDP growth across all of Africa was 2.9%, significantly lower than the 6% Maputo target. In response to providing redress to this state of failed ambitions, at the African Union Summit in Malabo, Equatorial Guinea in June 2014, the attendant heads of state and government adopted a new set of agricultural goals to be attained by 2025 dubbed the Malabo Declaration on Accelerated Agricultural Growth and Transformation for Shared Prosperity and Improved Livelihoods. In combination with several interventions, Uganda has been adopting numerable programs coherent with the general continent aspirations on the agricultural sector. In 2001, the government launched the National Agricultural Advisory Services Program, called NADS, with the overall goal of supporting transformation of the agricultural sector from subsistence to commercial farming. Over the years, NADS program has been riddled with corruption and misappropriation of funds, poor distribution of seedlings to farmers, and politicization of selection of beneficiaries. In June 2014, President Museven announced that the army would be entrusted with the role of transforming agriculture. Frustrated by the challenges in the agriculture sector, President Museven decided to redesign the NADS program by deploying UPDF officers to Luero and parts of eastern Uganda on a pilot basis to carry out roles hitherto meant for NADS dubbed Operation Wealth Creation. It's over this very matter of the NADS and Operation Wealth Creation involvement in the agricultural sector that we are right now hosting the Deputy Chief Coordinator Operation Wealth Creation and the Executive Director NADS to discuss their contribution and the controversial issues surrounding their contribution. This discussion is brought to you by NTV Uganda and sponsored by NADS Operation Wealth Creation. Join our programming extension of this discussion on NTV Facebook and Twitter. You are welcome. And thanks indeed for joining us. I'm Kagal Baldwins, and we're coming to you live from the Campus International Conference Center. Thanks indeed uh, for participating on our online discussion before even we start the studio discussion. We have posted on Facebook a question asking you that what are the problems facing the farming community in Uganda and what should be done to avail, to avail solutions to them. And uh, so far, a litany, a multitude of responses have been done on this particular question. Let me just cite out three as I proceed into the direct discussion here in the studio. Odong Moses says that the farming community in Uganda still uses rudimentary tools on farmland. Hardly can they afford expert knowledge on correct farming practices and they struggle finding readily available markets. Uh, then I have Mukasa Ivan. He says that there is need for mechanization of agriculture to improve on output. And uh, let me get an, a last quotation as I proceed on to the discussion. Rosie K, she says, traditional ways of farming lead to poor yields. Farmers need water throughout the year as rainwater harvesting solutions should be encouraged in order to have a year-round farming. Thanks for joining us. Again, I'm Karagawa Baldwins. I'm very pleased and delighted indeed to have great gentlemen here who are representing the public service in the area of agricultural agronomics. And straight away, on my extreme left, I have Lieutenant General Charles Angena, who is Uga UPDF, Uganda People's Defense Forces soldier, who has served in several missions uh, as sector commander in the DRC, military advisor in Tanzania, military attaché to the embassy of Uganda in Washington, D.C., appointed as chairman of the UPDF General Court Marshal, and apparently he is the deputy 
Chief Coordinator, Operation Wealth Creation Office of the President. You're welcome, Lieutenant General Angina Charles. Thank you, yes. Baldwin. Yes. You and, and thank you, the viewers of yes. this evening. Indeed. W when were you appointed to this role? I was appointed in January this year okay. into this responsibility. Wonderful indeed. Very delighted to have you here. Thank and you. in the middle, I have Dr. Samuel K. Mugasi, <coughs> PhD, holds a PhD in agro agriculture economics from Makere University, master's in agriculture economics, professor in the same field or teacher in the same field, and has a professional working period that spans over two decades. And this is uh, doc uh, yeah, Dr. Samuel, who is a executive director, NADS. Dr. Samuel, you're welcome. Thank you for the generous introduction. Absolutely. It is on merit. It's, <laughs> it's not a forged uh, introduction. My so, opinion. gentlemen, you're welcome. Great interest about this area of your work in the public service. So let me start with you, Lieutenant General uh, Angina. Explain to us uh, what NADS, Operation Wealth Creation, I'm being told these are literally now used intertwinedly and they're synonymous in their application on the ground uh, that NADS is literally the same as Operation Wealth Creation. So what is your mandate and what does it really mean? I will start uh, with the appreciating the command in chief for the trust and confidence he put in us, NADS or WC, in uh, ensuring that uh, we work around the clock with uh, a time frame given to us to deliver on the 68% of our population who are uh, in poverty. That is the president of Uganda, uh, yeah. General President Yore Museveni. The Command in Chief, okay. uh, General Yore Kaguta Museveni, who believes and uh, who also are confident in fulfilling on this mandate. Our biggest focus is the 68% of our population who are outside man economy. But uh, our effort is to transform the entire country to go into middle income status by 2020, whereby any of our people who are not earning more than 1.6 million per month, mm -hmm. which is translated to 20 million annually, mm -hmm. is achieved in the time frame of December 2020. Mm -hmm. On the screen, that is the overall goal, uh, paraphrased for uh, this Operation Wealth Creation and NADS. Yes, y y yes and uh, we are working very closely with the NADS to ensure that we increase production mm -hmm. across all the best uh, yielding crops so that uh, the, the economy in general, which is uh, based on uh, the background of agriculture, is able to, to span and be able to achieve in terms of uh, productivity and in terms of the market so that we are able to take this particular level of productivity to high level but also meet the proper market mm -hmm. and also ensuring that we develop the hubs so that uh, these hubs will be like a one-stop center when a farmer takes uh, the output of their productivity to where they will be processed and ultimately taken to a better market the farmer is certainly able to get the input from the same source and take it back to their home rather than meeting another cost of uh, after delivering it to where it will be bought in better market and then you drive to container village to pick the input you get into additional cost which is unnecessary and also we intend to ensure that value addition right from the, the, the garden up to the time when it is processed giving jobs to their children who are now in urban areas, who are looking for jobs now. When we bring in about value addition, it means that th these children who are graduates will be able to run the machines for processing. Mm -hmm. They will be the one doing the branding because they know the market where they are coming from in the urban area. They will be able to brand and also be able to market mm -hmm. those goods. And in <coughs> doing this, you would find that the socioeconomic transformation will be changed. But this intervention came from 2013 July when the president was able to face the realistic uh, situation of who uh, is f former Fronansa fighters who were in the corridor of uh, Ruenzori and uh, Luero and partly Mount Elgon. 
and he felt that the only way to do this is to reinforce the NADS sectariat with, with UPDF. And some people, of course, feel why should UPDF come? Yes, and I'm coming to that. You'll come to uh, that. Just, just uh, <coughs> because let me first bring in yes. uh, because that that is where the real uh, crux of the controversy is. But don't worry, yeah, you'll okay. answer that I when will, you come. I will answer that. Yeah. So let, let me come to Doctor. Uh, thank you for the submission. And I think today I saw you at Makere doing some kind of inauguration for the uh, for the students who uh, had done some kind of innovation in uh, the agricultural sector. Uh, doctor, mm. um, so considering this whole issue that uh, you have NADS, uh, it's contested about its performance and uh, the need for the army to come in, uh, help us to understand what is now the administrative and operational structure of NADS, operational wealth creation, because there's a perception out there that this institution or this program design is taken over by the army which we're coming to discuss because that controversy about. So what is the current structure of mm -hmm. this NAD? Thank you, Baldwins. Um, the current structure of NADS is that uh, we are an agency of the Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries. And the operational risk creation is a bigger intervention that is being implemented in various other ministries. But of course, being mainly an agricultural intervention, the Ministry of Agriculture, and for that matter, NADS, we are the, we are the forefront of this operation. Uh, the NADS Secretariat is the, is, is the main driver of this project. Uh, and as you heard from General, the UPDF came in to reinforce us in terms of making sure that the whole value chain, the whole distribution chain of inputs is well managed, is well implemented, up to the grassroots. We are operating in the entire country, in all sub-counties, and we're reaching almost all parishes. But what people should understand is that the UPDF is, 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 is not, in a way, as General explained, uh, displacing us. This is, this is a mutual role we are playing together with the UPDF. Uh, but to give you a back of the history, a bit of the history of NADS, NADS was an agency which was put in place as one of the pillars, if you recall, Baldwin's, mm -hmm. as one of the pillars of the plan for modernization of agriculture. But along the way, along the way, it became clear that we needed to revitalize the extension system of this country. Initially, NADS was in charge of provision of agriculture extension. But along the way, we learned lessons. We, we, we realized that it was, it, there was a need to refocus mm -hmm. NADS, because NADS was playing two roles, providing extension services, but also providing inputs. Mm -hmm. And mixing the two was a bit of the challenge. So the Ministry of Agriculture realized... Yeah, that, that is the vision and the mission statement? Ab yeah, uh, absolutely. NADS, yes. yeah. So, so <coughs> now, the, the, the what we see now as the new NADS, mm -hmm. our mandate now is to help farmers access critical farm inputs. As the way it is clearly stated, in the agricultural strategic uh, plan for this, for this financial year up 2020. So our role clearly as NADS is to make sure that we avail technologies to the farmers, strengthen the value chains right from production, value addition, marketing, so that farmers can, can earn an income. So briefly, that is our new structure as NADS. We have an office in Kampala here. I'm the executive director, as you heard. So we, have, we are playing a mutual role mm -hmm. with the UPDF. Okay. Uh, later on, of course, I will ask you how accountable you are about that, but that is pretty okay. Yes. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> Lieutenant, uh, General, let, let me have, before we go even to the next segment where we're going to deal with controversial issues. So, who, who do you uh, clearly target in this whole arrangement? Uh, you, talk, uh, you talked about the children of the, the poor, you're trying to make sure that there's agricultural transformation. How do you do the selection of the intervention? Do you go and do a study? Do people come and apply to you? We need to understand the systematic procedure that you do to actually give these benefits and perhaps to help these communities. The, the, the intervention uh, is focused at ensuring the entire country is transformed. But we put much interest to ensure the 68% of our population 
who are total outside man economy are given a priority. Just like... Who uh, are totally outside the man economy? Yeah. Can you explain that? Th those are people who are surviving from whatever they produce. Mm -hmm. It just ends up in them eating. They can't put any money in a the, in the bank. Mm -hmm. They can't save at all. Mm -hmm. And they have a burden of children who are at school and so forth. So they are compelled to sell part of their land or sell whatever little animal they are left with in order to sustain even mm -hmm. education of their children. So are those the, okay, just lastly, those are under the poverty line, are those are people who are simply not maybe in the formal sector. I, is it just purely about people who are not in the formal sector and they don't have enough earning power, or those who are below the poverty line? You understand the, the poverty the, line people yes, are now over 20 percent? Yes, those ones who are uh, uh, below the poverty line mm -hmm. and the uh, the, the toll order given to us mm -hmm. by the command in chief that they, by 2020 December they must be earning 20 million per household. Per year? Yeah, per year. Mm -hmm. So annually if they are to earn 20 million per household, we went down and broke it down to find out how much it is monthly. And it is 1.6 million. And therefore anybody who is earning less than 1.6 million mm -hmm. is part of our target. But like any medical doctor, you give different prescription for different kind of condition. Mm -hmm. So if you are 1.2, you are not yet 1.6, we now design with you what best can you do in line with your passion. Then we just give you support and you have to cross. While those ones who are really below, they can't even earn anything. Mm -hmm. We give them support through funding, and this funding, it is in kind, not really cash. cash. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, the critical component of our effort. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the, the other ones who are 32% of our population, who are already in private sector, they are already earning something, they really are contributing towards the economy. But then they find very high interest rates from the commercial banks. Those are the ones we can recommend and they get it from government banks like Uganda Development Bank, like Pride Microfinance mm -hmm. and Post Bank. So when they go there, the interest rate they give to them is comparatively lower. And that will also give them ability to come up mm -hmm. from where they are. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is that we identify other critical things that can fail the, the farmers. And in doing that, we deal with my, my, my mindset change. For instance, you will find that somebody is attracted to grow what is either plantation or crop or an estate crop mm -hmm. when they have very little land space. And for that reason, however much they try, they cannot succeed. So part of our effort is also to mobilize and change their thinking. For instance, I will give you an example. If you have less than 20 acres, you cannot go for sugarcane mm -hmm. because sugarcane is a plantation or crop. If you have less than 10 acres, you cannot be comfortable to go and cultivate tea. Mm -hmm. And that will make you end up not be able to break even within the period, the given period we have given to transform mm -hmm. the, those ones who are outside money economy. Okay, mm -hmm. so Lieutenant Jano, just a uh, pause on that. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll go for a break, then we come back and you ex extrapolate on that. Yes. Uh, of course, I, I need him to first give us the rationale behind having dismantled, not dismantled, mm. perhaps restructured NADS mm. and what accomplishments have been done and then we proceed on that and the, the question about the controversy of <coughs> the joining mm. the public management sector, literally, in that regard. Mm. Thanks to our viewers for keeping with us. Please go on Facebook and Twitter, continue having uh, the, the interaction with us. I will cite out uh, some of your responses uh, in due time as I get it. Please, we'll be back after the short break. <coughs> and uh, uh, thanks indeed for keeping with us. I, I have a, a short video clip just to represent what actually NADS is doing on ground. So uh, let's have it played right here.
I was privileged among a few youth here in Teso where we generated interest that we needed to engage ourselves into dairy farming, where we engaged the NADS secretariat by then, and uh, they made a pledge to give us some heifers. So in that, the president honored that and gave us heifers in 2014 August. And these heifers were delivered by then and handed to the youth here in Teso, in Soroti, by the first lady. So I was among the 16 beneficiaries here of Cabo Maido that I benefited from this cow. In this initiative, the Uganda People's Defense Forces were tasked to ensure efficiency and equity in the distribution and delivery of agriculture inputs such as oranges, heifers to the beneficiary communities and households such as these farmers in the eastern region. In Kabramado District Headquarters here, my work is mobilization and sensitization to the community and distribute the, the inputs to the community down there. As is its mandate to support households and communities through agriculture, NADS has ensured capacity training of young farmers in communities to better social livelihoods. And thanks for continuing. That's um, Karagawa Baldwin's and that is one of the success, kind of an elaboration of what Operation Wealth Creation is doing on ground. And on Facebook, uh, you are still interacting with us. Uh, there, the question I posted that uh, what are the solutions to our agroeconomic challenges that we're facing. Uh, I have Dungu Peter Julius who's saying counterfeit pesticides and fertilizers. Solution on the market and yet that brings about stiff competition for a market price. Uh, then I have Dungu, rather, sorry, I uh, have Belinda uh, Menendez. She says agricultural inputs should be subsidized so that even the rural uh, poor uh, can benefit from them. And so <coughs> continue, please, the feedback, and we will cite out your responses in the due course of the discussion. So, uh, Dr. Sam, yes, the, the episode happens that uh, the president has a, a, a serious disenchantment by how NADS was doing its job, and you were actually literally uh, given a verdict of failure for your operation. I don't know when you actually took over NADS as the executive director. But from that point, you mm -hmm. can tell us when you came, became the executive director and what accomplishments, so far, just about three, that have been realized under the NADS regime. Yeah, I thank you, Baldwin. I think one major accomplishment that will endure the test of time with regards to our performance as NADS is the progressive change of mindset of the people. Because increasingly, we see people now engaging in farming as a business. Previously, farming was left to the, you know, to the villagers, uneducated. But now it is quite interesting to find out that people like you, Baldwin, are picking interest in farming. Business, businessmen, teachers. The other day we were working with, with, with the, the judiciary. Magistrates and judges are picking interest in agriculture. So we are seeing a progressive mindset that people are beginning to realize that, look, farming is not for the ordinary people in the villages, but also educated people like you, Baldwin, people in business are beginning to get engaged in agriculture. And it is b precisely because we have taken the message down to the people that, look, you can earn an income in, in farming, you can make a living on farming. That is one enduring achievement of us as NADS because of constant engagement with the people about the importance of agriculture. The other major achievement, accomplishment of NADS, is that we have brought improve, improved technologies to the farmers. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether, Baldwin, you remember what we used to call the NADS banana. You remember? No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, 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 so so we, we brought quite a number of... Uh, when did you join NADS and when did you take over? As I, as I took over NADS as ED in 2012. Okay. In, okay. in, in, yeah. in, in June. Yeah. So, 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 but previously, of course, being in agriculture, I used to interact with NADS still. So I know quite uh, a lot how far, uh, how far NADS has come. So we, we also have helped to bring technologies to the farmers. And here I'm talking about both crops and livestock. 
but looking more about crops. Uh, if you go in most parts of the country, you will find a good number of farmers who, who are now planting improved varieties of cassava that are both uh, resistant to diseases, that are high yielding. You will find farmers who are now planting tissue culture bananas, the ones we have introduced. Because for us, what we do, because we can't reach all farmers, we demonstrate new technologies. So increasingly, we are seeing farmers adopting improved and new technologies. So and I was giving an example of bananas, cassava, maize. Because now maize, the, the, the high yielding varieties of maize, the hybrids produced by own researchers from Knaro, are now reaching deep in the villages. When you go in the villages and you look at gardens, you see farmers planting in lines. You see farmers planting improved varieties. So we have been able to take technologies from our researchers down to the farmer. So that is one enduring accomplishment of NADS, that technologies are beginning to reach down to the farmers. Um, the other one is that one other important accomplishment of NADS, and of course now with OWC, is that we, if you go down in the rural areas, mm. you, you will find those old NADS groups that were formed. So uh, NADS helped and is still helping farmers to come together in groups, in, ins in institutions, in associations, to plan together, engage in producing a given variety, a given enterprise, and go all the way up to marketing. So that way, we are beginning to see value chains that are building and getting strengthened from one level to another. Mm -hmm. One very good example that I can give you is the dairy value chain that we are now strengthening, right from helping farmers to get improved pastures, mm. For, the, for, the, for feeding the animals, we are helping them to get improved heifers. Then we go to the higher level of the value chain by availing them milk coolers. And recently we also gave tractors. So, so is in that the role of uh, dairy development also already? That, this, that DDA is our sister, camp, is our okay. sister agency. And we're working so Baldwin, we see a lot of things that NADS OWC is doing that are getting on the ground and are transforming this sector. Of okay, the thank you indeed. Uh, and uh, yeah, pretty. I, I know there are more issues that you should raise up, but yeah. because of the constraint and or yeah. time. Yeah. So, uh, General, let's let's get to discuss the hot potato in the public <laughs> sphere. So we, we we have the mandate of UPDF, and uh, I think my colleague, uh, it will be laid down on the screen. Article two hundred eight of the 1995 uh, Uganda Constitution states that. Uh, that, that there shall be armed forces uh, to be known as the UPDF and the Uganda People's Defense Force shall be non-partisan, national in character, patriotic. This is just uh, giving a character and the nature of UPDF. Members of the UPDF shall be citizens of Uganda and of good character. No person shall raise an armed force except in accordance with this. Now the functions, and I'm going to tell you why I'm <laughs> stipulating out this. 200, uh, Article 209 of the Constitution goes ahead and gives the functions of the army. Uh, it says to preserve and defend the sovereignty and territorial integrity of the, of the nation, to cooperate with the civilian authority in emergency situations, to foster harmony and understanding between the defense forces and civilians, and to engage in productive activities for the development of Uganda. That is the only last element that can somehow justify why the UPDF is in, in collaboration with NADS to do Operation Wealth Creation. But it's still not appropriately convincing because this you have gone a step of, uh, ahead and it seems like you're doing public management so we want you to understand what is your response to the public concern that you are overextending your mandate as an army into the public civilian space in the guise of operational wealth creation and we cannot now distinguish who is civilian is what the army should be doing what is your take on that thank you very much uh, baldwin uh, this particular area that uh, you have uh, emphasized as a hot potato yeah, it is to those who do not want to appreciate where the world has reached. If you want to appreciate the world better, you would appreciate it from this angle. That uh, when the population grows to the extent it is growing, you must begin to get worried on how this population is going to be managed in terms of uh, food, that's food security, in terms of jobs that they can absorb them so that they can handle living, and also in terms of infrastructure that can hold this population. 
globally it is a big problem. So the military is supposed to be a force that is productive as the provision of the constitution says, but it also has an, an act that emphasizes the aspect of operations other than war. When we are not at war, we must be able to conduct operations in this kind of way we are doing it. Where the command in chief says, since you have already extended your operations to outside the country, you have demonstrated that you can extend peace and tranquility in the region to the fraternity nations. You can also come back home and do what cooperative uh, groups normally do, what we say corporate responsibility. You go back to the people and do something for them. And this is one of the cooperative responsibility that UPDF decides that under the command in chief of President Yorim Seven, appointing one of our gallant generals who fought all his wars without defeat to lead this operation that will deliver our people who are in the bondage of poverty. Mm -hmm and also bring <coughs> transformation to the society. Mm. J just a slight uh, snippet, because you know the contradiction here, General, is that if you've read, there's a certain book by Frederick A. Hayek, it talks about the omnipotent state, and it shows how progressively, actually, the military tries to invade the public space and dis di literally destroy the public sphere of the public civilian. And now, the state becomes a military fostered and managed state, which becomes a problem that now the civilians no longer have their own say, they no longer have their own particular influence on the affairs of the state. You are not a politician, and I, I'm not, this is kind of a political aspect. So I, I need you to help understand that the NADS, NADS management was a failed kind of affair to some extent. That's what the president said. So is every failed project of public management going to be taken over by the army if that's how you're justifying that actually we need to come and I think maybe uh, yes let, let him first respond uh, to that uh, then you come don't to put you. the general <laughs> so, so much in the spotlight in yes. this matter uh, let me come in also to help okay yes uh, but I hope the, you understand the, my concern I do understand yes. uh, I, the, the UPDF has not taken over the, the, the agriculture sector they have come to work with us mm -hmm. let me give you the structure in the local government, mm. where the services are being delivered. If you go to a district, where do you come from, Baldwin? I come from uh, Fort Porto. From Fort Porto. Yes. You go to Fort Porto and visit the district agriculture office. You will find that there is an agriculture officer who is in charge of agriculture. Mm -hmm. In each sub-county, there is an extension worker mm -hmm. who provides information to the farmers. So. Uh, Clearly and frankly, the agriculture sector is in the hands of, 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 Civilian. of civilians, yeah. of the professionals at that level. Okay. If you come here at the ministry level, we have the entire structure and machinery of, of, of civil servants. We have the minister, we have the permanent secretary, we have the agencies. So you shouldn't pick, uh, uh, paint a picture of my brother general <laughs> general coming yes. to push us out of office that's okay. not that's not the issue all right we are working together with yes. them and by the way some of these people in uniform <coughs> mm -hmm. are agronomists are veterinary, uh, veterinary doctors so so t to me uh, the, the 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 picture shouldn't be that they they came to uh, otherwise i wouldn't be here okay, in the okay. Studio. All right. so, so we are working with yes, with these yeah. co 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 comrades we're yeah. working with them yeah. very well very efficiently, and we are we are learning. Okay, so service. general, I, I hope you understand. This is a, just a reflection of the public yeah, opinion. Yes, yes. Uh, mm. and I want to give the public the assurance. Yes, that we did not come from heaven. Mm. We came from society, and society gave us to government. And we want to thank our command in chief for having made us not just be war fighters, but professional force that can be able to double in national security and also in the economic development of our country. Now, it would be very unfair for anybody to imagine that the people who sacrificed their lives for the sake of this nation, for the love of this nation, they went to the front line and defended this country, which was in turmoil. It has now stabilized this country and stabilized the region. Now, when they come to help, mm -hmm. 
to liberate our own people who are in bondage of poverty, you begin to get worried. And this is just an intervention with a time frame. Mm -hmm. okay. I said this is an operation other than war, which is an intervention with a time frame. I told the, the viewers that uh, by 2020 December, we mm -hmm. must have delivered on this particular assignment of ensuring that each household earns 20 million, and we are going to deliver on that. There's no doubt, and I will mm -hmm. be able to give assurance on how this can be achieved. Mm -hmm. Because we come <coughs> from a training that gives us to appreciate, to identify where is the problem. Because we know once we identify the problem, we are halfway solving it. Mm -hmm. We are graduates of Sansu, the greatest military strategist. So for, for people to begin getting worried mm -hmm. that we are bringing reinforcement, what we use in the military, support to agriculture sector and other ministries. Because we are not only in agriculture, we are in all ministries department, mm -hmm. departments and also in the different uh, departments and uh, authorities mm -hmm. for purpose <coughs> of ensuring that any sector that would contribute towards operational creation, mm -hmm. we are there to ensure that we augment their effort and we deliver on this mandate. Mm -hmm. The other worry would be that if the military was coming to, to take over the responsibility, the means of uh, agriculture, whom we salute, we, s we respect the civil authority as per the, the constitution, I don't see why people should be worried. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also believe that if we fail to give support when there is a disaster, when there is an emergency, then we have let our country down. We have let our people down. Because if our people die of famine, then we have let them down. If our people die of poverty, mm -hmm. we have let them down. Mm -hmm. Now, we, we are bringing the experience of planning. We bring experience of, of projecting and also identifying where the problems are and mm -hmm. fixing it. Okay. How can people want to miss on such experiences we have had? Okay. We have been able to deliver where bombs and bullets are, are raining on us. And through God's grace, we have survived. Now, we bring it now where there's no bullets, no bombs. People say, why are you coming? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just a distinct. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> indeed. Yeah. Now, just uh, two minutes, I, I need to go for another break. Mm. Uh, okay, so how accountable are you? Because still, I, I'm not... Is is the are the soldiers accountable to you? Because what I realize they are under the presidential uh, docket. Mm. Uh, how is the accountability system? Are you accountable to the parliament? How is the public actually accounted to? Mm. Or if you're not accounting to the parliament, who mm. are you accountable to? As NADS and Operation Wealth Creation. Well, uh, NADS as an organization, mm. as I earlier mentioned to the viewers, is that NADS is a, as an agency under the Ministry of Agriculture yeah. and Municipal Fisheries. OWC is a more overarching framework. Mm -hmm. They have interventions in the Ministry of uh, Energy, the interventions in the Ministry uh, uh, mm -hmm. of Water. Ministry of Water. So the OWC is more overarching in terms of their structure. So for us, as NADS, we report through the Ministry of Agriculture and of course, ultimately, to parliament, like any other agency of government. And, and, and the OWC, they also have their reporting structures. They have, as you have heard, General Angina is the deputy chief coordinator of the operational creation. So they have their own reporting structures. But in terms of... Who, who is the actual coordinator, the chief coordinator? It's General Salim Saleh. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, so, <coughs> so uh, each of the agencies where they operate, including NADS, including in DDA, and they do have what they, whom they call, they have what they call liaison officers. You mm. find them in NARO, that is the National Agricultural Research Organization. Mm. You find them in the DDA, that is the Dairy Development Authority. You will find them in the UCDA, that is the Uganda Coffee Development Authority. So they are in all these agencies to coordinate the entire operation. Mm. So they have their own uh, reporting lines, but for us as agencies, we report to our ministries through our PS, and of course, ultimately, we are accountable to Parliament and to the people of Uganda. Okay, thanks, Dr. Samuel. We'll come back. We have still some issues to really uh, cover over, uh, yeah. even in this segment. But let me go for a break, and uh, then we'll come back and have this discussion. Thanks, our viewers. Please, we'll be back here after this short commercial break.
And thanks our viewers for continuing with us. I'm going to request for phone calls. Please, if you want to give us feedback, I just need three callers. And my panelists here are ready to give a response to any issues that are coming through the phone call uh, uh, correspondence. And of course, online, continue with your discussion. We shall have them responded to. However, as we, we move on in the discussion here in the studio, I'm, I'm just going to inquire from you, Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant General uh, Charles Sengina. Uh, we, we have the, the most recent findings of the Operation Wealth Creation Implementation Performance Report released in May 2017, which you are very familiar with. Uh, it stated uh, several problem problems that uh, were facing the intervention. And uh, one was Operation Wealth Creation distributes in inputs to farmers, let uh, some inputs are supplied when they are not among the priority enterprises of the district. For example, Moroto and Nakapi Pit, uh, Citrus and Mango seedlings, which were supplied, were rejected. So we need assurance. What, what assurances do you give the public that uh, this Operation Wealth Creation intervention is going to stay on course and will sustainably succeed? Yeah, thank you very much, moderator <coughs> and the viewers. My first uh, uh, wish is to apologize to any of uh, the people who have been affected mm -hmm. by either delayed uh, uh, deliveries of uh, call of orders. At times, it is a situation beyond our own uh, management in terms of the global warming and unpredictability of weather condition. We get proper guidance from uh, our forecasters of the weather and they tell us this is what is going to happen mm -hmm. and then it doesn't happen. Even when you are in a, a city like this, you find it's raining on one part of the, the city, the other side it's dry. Mm -hmm. So there are many uh, factors that's affecting, but we apologize and we, we have found a solution. And the solution to this uh, in two, uh, uh, two uh, ways. One, one is to ensure that uh, we do the e-voucher card system whereby we are able to give the farmer groups the authority to procure the items that we think can work in their area after we have agreed and then we have formed the farmers, farmers groups that we know they have the same uh, passion if they are for maize then we know this is the group that we have clustered as maize growing group mm -hmm. then if they are for onions we cluster them in the same manner mm -hmm. then ultimately we are able to give them the e voucher card okay. and yeah. that one will enable yeah. them to yeah. get yeah. their Just a side items. I pause on that I apologize for <laughs> seeming uh, impolite let me get a call because okay. uh, there's a lot of buzz on online uh, rather on the phone call so I need to get uh, to hear from you hello Yes, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, good evening, how are you? Nice to hear you. What's your name and where are you calling from? I'm called Mr. Sekasi Samuel yes. Matuga. Please go on. What's your comment or question? Uh, but I would like to, to, to comment, to put my comment in Uganda. Uh, I, no, it's not. Uh, it, it's, it's an English show. I apologize. Uh, so uh, I have to take another caller. Hello? Hello? Okay, uh, let me proceed. I apologize. I think the moderation of the show is in English. I understand. There's a popular... Hello? Hello? Yes, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening to you. Yes, your name and where you're calling from, sir? My name is David Debon, calling from Apache. All right, nice to hear you. What's your comment or question? Uh, my question is that uh, the financing instrument... Mm -hmm is really still lacking in terms of empowering farmers to uh, undertake mechanization, access the right inputs, mm -hmm. and this will require a very strong public-private partnership that can empower the, the, the local farmers also to be part of the value chain. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering how open this process is Mm -hmm. Because in the past, I've seen farmers have already come together. They have mobilized over 17,000 acres of land. Mm -hmm. The biggest problem is bush clearing. No incentives really do exist to mm -hmm. really get these projects off the ground. But we think that we can really be the food basket for this country. 
Okay, any so particular like panelist, any insight. one of my uh, guests yeah. you would wish to, un to respond to your uh, Thank you. inquiry? Okay, uh, I think you've got Thank the question you. about yes, the, the procedure. Okay, um, somebody else online? Okay, so I think you've so, got... Uh, yes, I've got uh, uh, a question. Yes, somebody else, just a minute. Hello, good evening. Hello. Yes, gentlemen. Um, why at NTV Live? Pardon? Hello? Yes, please speak up. Uh, this is NTV Live from uh, the Campus International Conference Center, and we're discussing NADS. What's your name or your, and, and where are you calling from? Uh, I'm called Mavida Shafiq. Yes. Where are you um, calling from, from and what's Tambala. your question or comment? I'm from Tamba. So what I'm saying that what we are basically supposed to focus on mm -hmm. is, the, is the instrument from RIGAP. Okay, unfortunately you're not clear. It's unfortunate. Okay, so General, I think you can make a response over that and the assurances, just about a minute. And yes, then, uh, thank you very much, moderator. Yes. I want to appreciate uh, my brother David De Bong from Apache mm -hmm. for that uh, very good question, a question that uh, is in line with what we are planning to do in our next phase of our operation. Our operation has four phases. Mm -hmm. We have just completed the phase one, yes. which was mobilization, sensitization, and deployment mm -hmm. of the UPDF structure, the superstructure, up to uh, constituency level, mm -hmm. from national to constituency level. And he has confirmed that this organized group, mm -hmm. which is already ready with acreage of land that they can grow as a group, mm -hmm. that qualifies them to get the equipment. Mm -hmm. And the Minister of Agriculture, uh, NADS and OWC are going to procure a number of tractors and it will be targeting this kind of group. Okay. And if the one for bush clearing, mm -hmm. we also have equipment that are with the Namalere Research Station, mm -hmm. which is hired to the farmers at affordable uh, price. Mm -hmm. And now if we put e voucher card system, we can put that money in that e voucher cards for hire of bull, bush mm -hmm. clearing mm -hmm. equipment and also for fertilizer and other items that can boost this productivity, okay. which a bong was worried about. All right, no, no problem. So I'm going to proceed, Dr. Samuel, but let mm -hmm. me pick this phone call, and then uh, it will be a closure to our phone calls. Hello? Yes, uh, good evening. Uh, good evening, sir. Please speak up. What's your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, my name is Fred Gena. Yes, Fred. Your question or comment? Yeah, yeah thank you very much for the presentation. Mm -hmm, thank you. I wanted to find out uh, from uh, the, the presenters there the, about the targeting mechanism. How do you target the beneficiaries of this project? We've seen like with Lira, uh, the people who are supposed to have benefited who are, who are, who are the, 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 the very poor, you know, end up not benefiting. But this money and uh, the, the, the program ends up into the hands of, you know, people who are seemingly better off than the very poor of the poor. Mm -hmm. So okay. uh, the question is, what targeting mechanism do they have in place to make sure that it is an all-inclusive program for everybody? Thank you. Okay, thank you indeed, Fred. Mm. I, I think we talked yeah. about uh, over, we went yeah. over that same question, yeah. but, but you can just have a reiteration about it, and then yeah. I, I need you to make a comment slightly on the Maputo and, of course, the Malabo mm. protocol mm. that uh, mm. we are send it, we, we ascribe to. Yes. Yeah, um, the, Ma the Malabo? No, no, yeah. this first, yes. Okay. Yeah, um, <laughs> let me first talk about the financing to supplement what yes. the general said. Mm -hmm. uh, agricultural financing is still a, a big problem in Uganda because our, our biggest source of financing is from the commercial banks mm -hmm. with commercial uh, l uh, lending rates, which is still a problem for agriculture. Mm -hmm. But uh, there, are some fa uh, there are some facilities. There's what we call the agricultural loan facility. I know it may not be affordable for the at by most of our local farmers, but farmers who have organized themselves and can raise, as the gentleman said, 13,000 uh, acres of land. This is a commercial venture which really needs uh, uh, huge capital, and they can approach Bank of Uganda under the agricultural loan facility because this is really uh, 13,000 acres is a commercial venture which needs uh, uh, serious financing. Uh, if you come to the Malabo, Yes, I actually the stipulation yeah. of the Malabo declaration. Oh, targeting, uh, the targeting yes. of farmers, uh, okay. uh, Baldwin. Yes. Yeah, targeting of farmers, 
general has already talked about it, is that our focus is the 68% mm. of the farmers who still live on agriculture uh, as a source of income, mm -hmm. but mainly as subsistence. They are unable to make a earn a surplus as an income, maybe to, to, to purchase a bicycle, to build a, a good house. So that is our focus. Mm. But nonetheless, each enterprise has its own targeting methods, its, its own targeting uh, guidelines. For example, if you are to go into, into tea, mm. f tea we are saying you must have at least a minimum of five acres because less than five acres, tea does not make economic sense for the farmer. If you are to go into dairy, for example, if you are to benefit from a to have a, to have a heifer, you must have at least one acre of pasture, you must have water, you must have uh, at least uh, a disease control facility. So we, we have guidelines for each enterprise. Mm -hmm. And if you, talk of, if you talk of maize, for example, maize is mainly targeting the food insecure households. So we have given clear guidelines to the districts on how beneficiaries should be identified and selected for each particular enterprise. So, uh, but the complaint that uh, Fred has raised is a complaint that we have been receiving, but we have uh, given information to the districts to strictly adhere to our guidelines because each enterprise mm -hmm. has its own uniqueness and has its own guidelines of selecting beneficiaries. Okay, just a slight comment on the Malabo protocol, rather declaration, because if we don't, it, it's the general context yeah. under which we do uh, these, con these interventions locally, but in correspondence with the international <coughs> or continental aspirations. The, the mm. Malabo, Malabo is the capital city of Burkina Faso, and that's where the recent, Af the 2013 uh, African Union uh, Summit, Heads of State, was, um, was shared from and uh, it had several recommendations and recommendation num one was that the principles uh, recommendation rather recommitment to the principles and values of the CAADP um, process and commitment to enhancing investment financing in agriculture but this was a successor to the Maputo protocol which had two major uh, aspirations to allocate at least 10 percent of national budgets to agriculture and to achieve at least six percent of annual agricultural growth. So how far are we um, in this entire process? I think currently you, with the Minister of Finance has about 8.7% uh, of the international uh, GDP budget that is, was set for 2017-2018. So not yet still hitting this particular bit of the financing of 10%. Mm. Yes. Yeah, with regard to the Malabo as a country, we aren't doing very well because uh, we are now, I think, at around 3% mm -hmm. financing of agriculture. So we are way, way below. But of course, as a country, we appreciate mm. that the government has other spending pressures. We need roads. We need energy. So, so we, we, we in, in, in agriculture, whereas we would want the government to raise the mark mm -hmm. to the Malabo ceiling of 10%, we appreciate that the government must also deal with other pressures. Uh, but nonetheless, we are trying to, 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 to work within the available budget. But the uniqueness about Malabo mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. unlike Maputo, which mainly focused on agriculture as the vehicle for achieving the 6% growth, Malabo also brings in on board other areas, other critical areas that will help to transform agriculture. Things like infrastructure, things like energy, and this government must be commended for the, the work we have, they have done uh, to improve infrastructure, especially with regards to roads, with regards to energy. So we see some good level in this government of complementarity of, of, of interventions. Because if you go into villages now, you see electricity going into the villages, which will facilitate value addition. Mm -hmm. When you go into these remote areas, you see Im improved feeder roads going into the remote areas, which helps to evacuate crops and other produce to the markets. Mm -hmm. So although financing for agriculture is still low, but we see other supportive infrastructure mm -hmm. that we need in agriculture to be able to support the sector. Okay. So by and large, I think the government within the limited resources is doing what it takes to support the agriculture sector. Okay, so uh, uh, thanks for the submission. So Lieutenant <coughs> General, uh, just I need you to respond to this question, then we all summarily uh, respond to the future of agriculture. Now, the, there are several challenges that have been cited uh, about operational wealth creations and nuts to the point that, of course, there was this restructuring that was done. So we need you to 
help us uh, understand how these numerous challenges that you have faced. Because I can see in the NADS Operational Wealth Creation Agriculture Sector Annual Monitoring Report for National Year 2014-2015, is just about uh, several issues were raised, and there was uh, issue of poor data capture due to limited skills and staff, loss of inputs at farm level to poor selection of beneficiaries, some of whom had no land or capital to plant and sustain the commodities. So how are you dealing with these challenges? What is the improvement plan to ensure that this service delivery of intervening in the agricultural sector is, is really uh, formidable? Yeah, our, our second phase of our operations is to bring stability mm -hmm. in all this effort. Mm -hmm. And then the third phase is uh, consolidation. And then we shall now be able to hand over in the first phase. Now, we have taken the trouble to identify problems. Mm -hmm. And uh, once you identify problems, I told you from uh, our training, it's a halfway solving it. And uh, we have identified all that you have said and uh, we have said the best way to do is to do deal with the bigger things first. Mm -hmm. And that is to ensure that we have the data of all the farmers and get to know their land size and then cluster them according to their passion on what they want to do. And we see whether it makes sense with the land size and discourage them on the aspect of land fragmentation and also ensuring that we bring permanent solution to mm -hmm. them going full, full, full throttle in the production and then they're hit by drought. Mm -hmm. So we said the first thing we have to do is to come with master plan on irrigation so that uh, however much you grow, you don't lose because of relying on rain-fed agriculture. And in doing this, we have uh, had uh, over six meetings with the National Planning Authority means of agriculture nabs to ensure that uh, all the areas that we can identify through God's uh, intervention, our country has very good terrain for gravitation irrigation. Renzori in the west, mm -hmm. Mount Elgon and CP uh, in uh, Mount Elgon, which is in Bugiso and CP in, in, uh, in Sebe, can give very good push on uh, uh, gravitation irrigation. Then we have Mount Mor Moroto, which also can support that uh, area with the, all those mountains I mentioned has rain, mm -hmm. I mean has water. So when it rains, it just floods and causes destruction. Mm -hmm. But if we manage it very well, it will be more into productive uh, effort and remove this issue of drought mm -hmm. when uh, it hits our people are, are in that challenge. Mm -hmm. Then in the north, we are also advantaged with good terrain of Mount, uh, Mount uh, Agoro, mm -hmm. which could also give us gravitation uh, irrigation. And then God bless this country with different streams, l rivers, and lakes, mm -hmm. which we can also use. Mm -hmm. And our survey has also proven that everywhere we have water, unless you're on the mountain and very difficult rocky places, but everywhere, it's only how, d how deep down you go, you mm -hmm. get water, and we'll have solved this problem. And we know that uh, there's been a big challenge of people cutting trees and destroying environment. Mm -hmm. And you cannot stop them to do that when you don't give them alternative. That's why in our strategy, we are trying to give each home a cow so that we go biogas in order to ensure that you have energy to cook from the biogas and you mm -hmm. can light so that you have no reason to cut the trees for energy. Mm -hmm. okay. And we, we have also thought that it would be wise in the areas that people are so poor that they cannot manage the mm -hmm. Frisian animal, we intend to use AI but improve on the local animal. So that mm -hmm. by the time they get out of management of local animal, they can now manage the improved mm -hmm. uh, Frisian animal using an Greek mm -hmm. and with AI, artificial insemination. Mm -hmm. But when we do this, if you are qualified to get a Frisian in calf, mm -hmm. we cost it. So that if you're getting the local, you don't get one. You get maybe three, maybe four. And that will give you enough cow dung, will give you enough milk, and will give you experience before you get the improved uh, heifer. Okay. And then you'll not be able to have high rate mm -hmm. of mortality. And we have also identified yeah, that yes, another, 30 seconds that yeah, we another problem that we identified mm -hmm. was the problem of corruption. Mm -hmm. And we are dealing with that also very seriously 
Then the issue of high cost mm -hmm. of production. Mm -hmm. We are also trying to address that and we thank God that we have also known besides the potential we have in our hydropower, mm -hmm. God has given us uranium in Kisoro, Kawala and Rukungiri and that would give us another big source of energy, mm -hmm. which is nuclear energy. Oh, that's tremendous. So yeah. there's yeah. great hope and then w w w water transport mm -hmm. was another factor and yeah. oil transport to discongest using only the roads, which, which we destroyed the, the infrastructure because mm -hmm. there are heavy trucks all on the road. But if we introduce water transport and railway, then we shall have solved the bigger problem. Mm -hmm. And for sure, we shall have resolved this bigger challenges in a holistic manner. Oh, brilliant. Thank you indeed. So just in one minute, each of you, mm. uh, starting with Dr. Samuel, mm. what is the future of this nation's agro uh, sector? Do, are we to ever see a situation where in, in no year we have drought, rather we have um, hunger that uh, takes on people's <coughs> lives and people die because they are mm. infested with famine and they cannot access food. Yet we initially, or in the uh, way back uh, of times, we mm. were referred to as the food basket of this region, and mm. literally even south of, of this. Yeah. Uh, mm. Yes, so what is the future of, just in a minute? Yeah, Baldwin, I think <coughs> Uganda, Uganda's agriculture, the future of Uganda's agriculture is very bright. Mm. And for about three or four reasons. One is that in terms of the potential of arable land, Uganda has the biggest proportion of arable land in the whole of East Africa. So in terms of land, that is a strength. Secondly, there are plans to build a fertilizer factory, a fertilizer factory in Uganda. Uganda is one of the, the lowest users of fertilizers in, in Africa. Uganda now, our average, is about two kilograms per acre, mm -hmm. compared to Kenya, which is at about 30 kilograms per acre. So once that factory is, 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 is built, I think, in, in, in eastern Uganda, we shall have dealt with the issue of fertilizers, which are critical in mm -hmm. production and productivity. Number three is that we have a strong research system in Uganda. We are proud of our institution of NARO. They are doing fa uh, fantastic that is the research. Agricultural research yeah. organization. Absolutely. So they are, they are doing fantastic, a fantastic work, a mm -hmm. fantastic job in terms of research and technologies. So that one is a strength that gives us a hope as a country as regards agriculture. Lastly, one of the challenges we faced in agriculture for some time is a weak ex agriculture extension system. Yet ex an extension system must be efficient for you to see a transforming agricultural sector. Now the sector of extension is being revitalized. It is getting on the ground. And all these factors put together, they give me hope that our agriculture is going to flourish. Mm -hmm. And if indeed, if you move now in some parts of the country, we begin to see commercial scale farming. Mm -hmm. I, I've seen, when I'm beginning to see combined harvesters in, in Uganda. We are beginning to see huge silos coming up in parts of this country. We are beginning to see uh, center pivot irrigation systems. <coughs> uh, I, I, I saw one in Masaka recently. So we are beginning to see the agriculture that we desire for this country, commercial scale agriculture. So to me, the future of agriculture in this country is very bright. Ah, thank you indeed. Yes, General, General. Yeah, I wanted One to minute, yeah. I wanted to conclude by giving the viewers and the country the assurance that this operation will succeed. One aspect is what uh, Dr. Mugasi has uh, alluded to and explained that there's a brighter future. Besides agriculture, because we know for us to achieve in this operation it will not be agriculture alone. It is industrialization. It is ensuring that the economy is put in the right hands. Mm -hmm. And then we see that all these youth that have graduated are employed. And this is very possible. Why? Like I just mentioned to you that in the southern part of our country, we have uranium, we have tin, we have iron, all in commercial value. And just these three items can industrialize the nation. But if you leave that area and you enter areas of Kasese, Fort Foto, up to Bundwujo, we have copper, we have cobalt, we have uh, zinc, we have gold, we have oil, we have gemstone, and we have water resource. Mm -hmm. When you leave that and enter the central part of the country, we have very good sand, which can make 
a glass and that can also help in, 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 in industrial and infrastructure development. We also have gold mm -hmm. in huge, you, you heard what was happening in Mubende, just to set an example, and it stretches the whole way mm -hmm. up to uh, Busia. All that belt is to gold. The border of Kenya. Uh, to border yeah. with Kenya, it's all gold. Mm -hmm. When you enter Tororo, just like uh, Dr. Mugas was saying, uh, we have huge deposit in the uh, Sukuri Hills mm -hmm. of uh, uh, fertilizer, mm -hmm. phosphates for fertilizer. Mm -hmm. And we also have uh, iron, although not of su supreme quality like mm -hmm. the one of, of uh, Kisoro, Rukungira, and Kabale. We also have iron uh, there. And we also have gemstone mm -hmm. that can help with the industry and other minerals. When you enter Bugisu, we have uh, vermiculite which extends up to Bukwa in Kapchorwa. Mm. And all this is very, very expensive mineral mm. and the best quality in the world. Once it hits the world market, they cannot sell. Mm. When you enter Teso, there's oil, there's gold, there's uh, uh, marble. So there's no way from whatever angle you want to see it that we can fail in this operation. Mm -hmm. The challenge was corruption. I've told you we have identified and we're going to deal with it. Mm. The high cost on production, that was a denying investors coming. Mm. Then the bureaucracies in uh, getting the investors to address their concern and begin working. That's why we are there, to ensure that those bureaucracies, corruption and so forth is all dealt with. Mm. And then opening up the road, uh, the railway and, uh, and water transport. Mm. Once this is in place, we believe God was very good to Uganda for having given us all these minerals mm. covering the entire country. Moreover, so yeah. people should be assured yes. this is going to be delivered. Wow, wonderful prospects indeed. Uh, and we thank you for the effort that you're putting in. Uh, these questions, we give them to you to make sure that uh, you help the public to be aware of what you're doing. And uh, Lieutenant General Charles Sangina, the Deputy Chief Coordinator of Operational Wealth Creation Office of the President, uh, very grateful to have you here. And Dr. Samuel K. Mugasi, PhD. Uh, nice to have you, the Executive Director, Nad. Thank you. Uh, it's been a splendid discussion, and I'm looking forward to having you again. Uh, yeah, hopefully, indeed, it will work out. But God bless, and thank you indeed. God thank bless you. you too. Yeah. And thanks to our viewers for keeping with us. We're very delighted that you're keeping with us. And I continue, urge you, if you're out there as a company, or an NGO, or a government <coughs> ministry, or department, or agency, and you want to engage in a comprehensive discussion about a matter concerning your area or your entity, please come talk to our MD. Come talk to our sales team or myself. From me here and my team in the technical room and uh, our producer, the marketing and the sales team and our entire management, we thank you for keeping us as your number one station here in Uganda. And of course, I believe across the region. I'm Kaga Baldwin. Please have a great night and God bless. <laughs>